Does God exist? What if it was possible to prove it? And I don't mean through faith, but through math. See, some people think that mathematics can prove the existence of God. But then many atheists say that we don't need to believe in God because science can explain everything, or that it will at least be able to someday. But is that actually true? Can science really explain everything? Or are there some things, some mysteries that it just can't touch? Well, we often hear that science is the ultimate tool for understanding the physical world. But think about it, by its very definition, science can't tell us if there's anything outside the physical world, anything immaterial. But when people talk about God, they usually mean an immaterial being, something that's non-physical. So what does this have to do with math? Well, let's start with the basics. What is math? Math is about numbers, the information about those numbers, and the way they all connect together. But where do we find math? We can't see it, hear it, touch it, or taste it. Math only exists in our minds. We find it by thinking and discovering more about it. But even though math is only in our minds, it also explains things. It explains everything from from simple counting to the movements of planets or anything formal that you can think of, there's a mathematical explanation. So if math is only in our minds, but also explains things in the physical world, well, where does it come from? Well, there are two ways to answer this question. The first is that math is something that human beings invented to explain what we observe in the physical world. If that's the case, then mathematics only exists in the mind as something that humans made up. The second is that math exists independently of humans and it governs the universe and we've simply discovered it. If that's true, then mathematics actually has a real, immaterial, metaphysical existence. Well, which is it? Is math invented or discovered? To understand this, think about the Pythagorean theorem. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Now, Pythagoras is the one who got credit for this theorem, even though it was most likely already known a long time before he was born. But for the sake of argument, let's just pretend that he was the one who discovered it. Well, this truth, the Pythagorean theorem, it didn't start becoming true when it was discovered. He didn't invent it out of nothing. It always has been true. He didn't somehow create this relationship. He discovered it and put it into a form that humans could understand. That is by using symbols to represent it. Think about it. Even if no one had ever discovered the Pythagorean theorem, it would still be true. The sides of every right angled triangle would still obey this relationship, whether or not anyone knew about it. If math was something that humans just made up, we could decide that the Pythagorean theorem worked differently. We could say a squared plus b squared equals c cubed or something else entirely, but we can't. The Pythagorean theorem works in a very specific way and there's no changing it. It's a universal truth that exists whether we know about it or not. If you believe math was invented, you're saying that humans have the power to create universal truths, but that's not possible. Mathematics is the underlying order of the universe and it's discovered. This means these truths exist independently of human beings waiting to be found. Physicist Michio Kaku said, math is discovered. To be invented requires an inventor, but math exists outside of humanity. And Erwin Schrodinger, the famous quantum physicist said, a mathematical truth is timeless. It does not come into being when we discover it. So we know that mathematics is something that actually exists. It's not invented, but it's also something that we can't find in the physical world. So it's not physical. So what is it? Well, think about the number five. The number five, it's not a physical object. Sure, you can find things like five rocks and five apples and five trees, but you can never find five itself. Mathematical truths such as numbers don't occupy space or have any kind of physical form. A number like five doesn't exist physically in the same way a tree or a rock does. You can't touch the number five, you can't smell it, you can't see it, but five exists. The idea of five works the same no matter where you are or what you're counting. It's always five whether you're on earth or on another planet. These mathematical principles don't change based on where we are. They're universal which shows that they exist beyond the physical world. Even even though we can't touch or see mathematics like we can with physical objects, it doesn't mean that math isn't real. If that seems strange to you, think about a video game and the programming code that the game runs on. You can't find the code anywhere in the game, but the code is what runs in the background giving structure to the game. The game couldn't exist without it. Likewise, mathematical concepts aren't anything you're going to find in the physical world, but they're in the background responsible for everything. Consider the Fibonacci sequence. This series of numbers is expressed everywhere in nature, from the arrangements of leaves on a stem, to the spiral of a shell, and even the proportions of the human body. This sequence wasn't invented by humans. It existed long before we named it. Like the code of a video game, it gives structure to existence. Our entire world operates on these principles. So could this mean that mathematics is the language of God? Philosophers like Plato and Pythagoras believed that this was a mathematical reality. Plato believed that physical matter was governed by geometric forms, and Pythagoras said that everything in existence 
existence is based on number and that they rule the universe. You might think these ideas are outdated, but think again. Consider quantum mechanics, which has baffled scientists for over 100 years. The behavior of particles at the smallest scales are described and dictated by mathematical equations. Werner Heisenberg, a founding figure in quantum mechanics, said, Modern physics takes a definite stand for Plato and the Pythagoreans. The smallest units of matter are not physical objects in the ordinary sense. They are forms ideas which can be expressed unambiguously only in mathematical language. In modern quantum theory, there can be no doubt that the elementary particles will finally also be mathematical forms. And the physicist Max Tegmark said, our physical world is a mathematical structure. This means that our physical world not only is described by mathematics, but that it is mathematical, a mathematical structure, making us self-aware parts of a giant mathematical object. So what does all this have to do with God? Let's break it down. First, math is not something that you can see or touch. It's not physical. You can only think about it. This doesn't mean it's not real. It absolutely is. It means math is non-physical, immaterial, and mental. It exists in the realm of mind not the physical world. Second, math contains infinite information. There are an infinite number of arrangements, each with their own unique properties and the relationships between them. This means that math itself is infinite. And third, math controls the universe. The laws of physics, the movements of the planets, the structure of atoms, everything follows mathematical principles. And this means that mathematics has an intrinsic order and is all powerful as it controls the functioning of the entire universe. So when you put all of this together, you get a concept that is non-physical, infinite, and all powerful. These are the exact attributes we typically associate with God. So because of this, there are some people who claim that math proves the existence of God. But hold on a minute, does it actually prove the existence of a theistic God or could it mean something else entirely? Think about it like this. If God is bound or restricted by something, well, then it stands to reason that that thing that restricts God would be more fundamental than God, right? With that in mind, think about this classic paradox. Can God create a rock that's so heavy that he can't lift it? Well, this might sound kind of funny or crazy at first, but it's actually incredibly important. If God can create a rock so heavy that he can't lift it, then there's something that he can't do, that is lift the rock. But if God can lift the rock, then he can't create a stone that he can't lift. Either way, there's something that God can't do. But shouldn't God be able to do anything? To understand this better, consider another example. In Euclidean geometry, can God make a square circle? That is a shape that's both a square and a circle at the same time. Well, a circle is always round and a square always has four sides. No matter how powerful you are, you can't make a round square or a four-sided circle. This paradox isn't just some kind of brain teaser. It shows us that an all-powerful being doesn't include the power to do what is logically impossible. In other words, even an all-powerful being can't break the rules of reason and logic. And what is math if not pure reason. So if even God can't break the rules of math, we could say that mathematics is higher than God or that mathematics is God. When we think about math in this way, we're not talking about a God with human-like qualities. Instead, we're talking about the essence of logical structure and order that governs the entire universe. Math is the blueprint of reality, the mental patterns that shape everything. But you might be wondering, well, then what created math? Well, the truth is, is that math is uncreated and eternal. People like to say that nothing created God and that God's eternal, but they can't say how or why, it's just taken on faith. With mathematics, we can say why it's eternal. The logic behind this is that reason explains reality and rationally, mathematics must exist. Why? Because math doesn't rely on anything other than its own internal logic. In other words, it doesn't need an external creator. Reason is what explains existence, not faith, not empiricism, but reason. Faith is belief without evidence, and empiricism relies on observation and experience. But reason is the tool that reveals truth by using logic and rational thought and mathematics must exist logically. It has necessary existence. What this means is that it cannot not exist. Imagine denying the existence of math. Well, this leads to contradictions. If two plus two did not equal four, the fabric of reality would unravel. Everything we understand about the world depends on these basic truths holding firm. Denying the existence of math isn't just wrong, it's logically impossible. If you try to deny mathematical truths, you end up with contradictions. It's like saying a square can be a circle. It just doesn't work. Think about it this way. If mathematics didn't exist, we would encounter impossible scenarios all the time. But by definition, impossible things can't exist. So math has to exist. It's the foundation of all logic and reason and it's self-sufficient. Math wasn't created, it simply is because it logically must exist. It wasn't brought into existence by any force or being. It's an eternal truth, unchanging and necessary. Without math, there would be no framework for understanding reality. Without it, we would face contradictions and impossibilities, which is why math must exist. And math being 
infinite has the power to generate all reality. You can't have a universe without math. It's the foundation of everything. Without math, there would be no structure, no order, no reality as we know it. This is why we exist at all. Why there's any kind of existence instead of there just being non-existence. So let's take this a step further. If mathematics is the ultimate reality, this means that our universe is fundamentally mental. Why? Well, because mathematics exists in the realm of mind. It's not physical after all. And if these mental mathematical patterns are the foundation of everything, well, then our reality is based on mind, not matter. We're all mathematical beings. Our bodies, our minds, our very existence are expressions of mathematical truths. Every cell in your body follows mathematical rules from the way your DNA replicates to the way your neurons fire. This means that all of us are part of this mathematical reality. In this sense, we are the ground of existence. We are eternal and divine, just like the math that underpins us. Because that is what we are. Our consciousness, our thoughts, and our experiences are all manifestations of mental mathematical patterns. We are immaterial mathematics expressed in human form. And this perspective changes everything. It means that we're not separate from the divine, but we are the divine. So does mathematics prove the existence of a theistic God like the God in the Bible? Absolutely not. What mathematics reveals is something much deeper. Mathematics itself is the formal essence, the true God that underpins everything. It's eternal, immaterial, uncreated, and infinite. In the end, whether we call it God, the divine, or the fundamental nature of reality, we're all connected to this infinite immaterial truth because it is what we are. We're not separate from God, we are God. And all evolution, all existence, all life is us as God exploring our infinite transformations. If you like this, check out my new book, Meta Rationalism: The New Science of Mind, that reveals how this is a mathematical reality. Link is in the description. Make sure you like this video video and subscribe, check out my other videos. And if you want to help my channel grow, become a member on Patreon or YouTube for weekly members only videos. And I want to give a big shout out to everyone who supports. My name is Morg and I am Neogenian.